Felangiri for the first time 2021. March 2021 brought about a wild adventure, a climb up the Velangiri mountain. Carrying a hefty backpack filled with essentials, including bed sheets and pillows due to travel restrictions, made the journey more challenging than anticipated. On the 18th of March, I decided to embark on a solo trek up the mountain, seeking solace for the night. Unaware of the terrain, I started walking towards Pundi Temple. However, the forest guards intercepted my path, cautioning against the mischievous and potentially dangerous elephants in the area. They advised taking a rickshaw to the temple for safety. Reluctantly, I agreed and paid the rickshaw driver rupees 60, reaching the temple to find a bustling crowd heading towards the mountain. Behind the temple, the path to ascend Velangiri mountain unfolded, also known as the second Kailash, or the Kailash of the South. The journey was both physically and spiritually significant, offering a unique and challenging experience that would leave a lasting imprint on my memory. In the pitch dark night, navigating the jungle path without a flashlight became an intriguing challenge. Aware of the impact of bright lights on elephants, I opted to traverse the path in darkness. However, Fellow pedestrians passing by with flashlights made me realize the potential irritation caused to the elephants. As I slowly ascended the second hill, a group of guys came running, urgently uttering something in their local language. The language barrier posed an obstacle, and the urgency of their tone didn't fully register. Eventually, some kids approached me saying, Anna, run fast, the elephant is coming. That's when the reality hit, and we all ran. As we reached the third hill, they assured me it was safe. Those three kids in their mid-twenties decided to accompany me, asking about my origin, why I travel alone, and other curious questions. In my forties, I had to match their pace, climbing without much concern. Upon reaching the fifth hill, their suggestion was to take some rest, sleep, and resume the journey at 5 a.m. The plan was laid out as they opened their tiffins to eat. Although offered food, I declined, as it was late into the night. Setting up my makeshift bed with a bed sheet over a piece of paper, I noticed these three kids sleeping beside a large rock, using minimal cover from the chilly March breeze. Around 11.45 p.m. or midnight, the weather suddenly changed. Within minutes, the paper underneath got wet, and a cold breeze set in. The kids, asleep and shivering, prompted me to ponder the next move. Lacking a matchbox or lighter, I hoped someone would arrive with a means to start a fire. Just in time, two guys approached, asking to join or create some space around the fire. I inquired about a lighter, and one of them had one. I sprang into action, collecting dry, broken branches, and together, we ignited a bonfire. As the night unfolded, none of us slept. The six of us gathered around the fire, providing warmth and camaraderie in the midst of the mountain wilderness. At 5 a.m., our journey resumed. We requested others to extinguish the fire before departing, emphasizing our responsibility to preserve the jungle. They agreed, and with that understanding, we moved forward. The trek was far from over, and the path continued its ascent. The altitude took a toll on me, especially with the heavy backpack pulling me down. Despite the physical strain, the presence of the crowd kept me going. As we reached the temple, where the majestic figure of Shiva greeted our eyes, a profound sense of peace enveloped us. We bowed down, feeling the energies around us. All the fatigue and pain dissipated, and it seemed as if we were elevated above the earth, somewhere akin to heaven. Below, the clouds drifted, and the wind soared high. The mountains lay beneath us, adorned with shades of green and blue, creating a surreal landscape that captured the essence of tranquility and divinity. This journey marked the beginning of a series of explorations, leaving nothing untouched. While the Velangiri trek offered a profound experience, 
the return journey became its own challenge, something to be experienced rather than merely recounted. During this adventure, I forged connections with three individuals, keeping the bond alive through social media, sending messages, and meeting whenever possible. These interactions exemplified the beauty of connecting with people on the journey. On my way back from Coimbatore, I unexpectedly encountered Rishab and Sanjana, accompanied by another friend. Initially, the conversation took time to unfold, but by the next day, we were a cohesive group. The entire train compartment echoed with camaraderie, and amidst the lively interactions, the journey seamlessly brought us to Pune, where the adventure had started. The connections made during this trip underscored the essence of exploration, not just of places, but of the bonds that enrich our journey through life. Over the past four years, my life has been a roller coaster ride, filled with changes and connections with people like Bavuk, Rishab, and Sanjana. These amazing individuals have stayed in touch, meeting at Isha or checking in with a simple phone call. Bavuk had this grand plan for us to visit Kedarnath together. However, when I finally made the trip, he was nowhere to be found. Despite the twists and turns, memories have accumulated, making it a challenge to put everything into words. The mind connects the dots, one memory leading to another in a cascade of events. The journey involves moments of growth, deep connections, and unexpected twists. Join me as I attempt to untangle the web of experiences and share the highs and lows that have shaped the person I am today. Stay tuned for a storytelling adventure that captures the essence of the past four years.